It was at this point did I realize that my microphone was muted. Hi everyone, welcome back to Tears of the Kingdom with me, Austin John Plays, and today we're going to be doing the regional phenomena of the Goron City. There's a, there's a Korok over there, just saw that. Cool. Anyways, I recorded this entire video over the last three hours or so, so right now I am going to be going through it, let's just say, a little bit faster than I did before. <laughs> first things first, to get to Goron City, you do not need any fireproof armor or anything else, unlike Breath of the Wild. And in this, you're only going to need one piece for all of the above ground areas, and you need two pieces for all the below ground areas. So if you have some upgraded armor or attack up armor, feel free to rock that for a good majority of this. To start off this portion of regional phenomena inside of Goron City, you need to make your way to the middle where you're gonna be seeing a whole big pile of marbled rock roast. From here, Slurgo and Offrack, who are the two little baby Gorons over here, are gonna be investigating this Goron who's laying on the floor with the Elder, and a cutscene is going to ensue, showing us Yanobo, who previously roast, was small and humble and cowardly, and now he looks like a WWF wrestler from the early 90s. What could you want? That's not a nice way to say hi to someone you haven't seen in a long time. Yonobo has changed, and in my opinion, not for the better. This is like a class reunion, and that one guy that you thought was kind of cool comes back and he's a complete D-bag. Yep, that's currently Yonobo, who pretty much everyone here in attendance, these three Gorons and myself, not a fan of. You're also going to be learning some information that apparently Zelda gave Yonobo that really cool hat and then told Yonobo to give everyone rock roast, which is brainwashing them, causing them to be lazy, unproductive, do nothing, not contribute to society, and become an epidemic for the entire Goron population. Not at all based off of any sort of real life parallels whatsoever that may have happened in the United States during the 1980s. Anyways, from the map, you're going to see our new destination that we have to go to, which is going to be this cave over here. And if you've activated this shrine, you're going to be seeing that we have this one rail that leads directly to it. So all we need to do is make our way on over there. And this is going to be Yonobo Co. HQ. We're going to be finding these two little baby Gorons. They're going to be hanging out. And they're going to be saying that ever since Yonobo put on that hat, he's been acting like a big old jerk and they're not a fan of it. Well, neither am I. Here we're going to be seeing Yonobo apparently taking orders from Princess Zelda. He's then going to be attacking that big red rock, and more marbled rock roast is going to be coming out of it. The two kids are saying, hey, since you put on the mask and now you're a big jerk, and Zelda's going to be all like, here, look, take a look at these. And then Yonobo's going to go all roided out. From here, you're going to have to deal with Yonobo during a combat sequence that isn't too much of a combat sequence. All you need to do is just slowly walk out of the way and he's going to be banging his head into a wall. Now, if he makes contact with any red rock, he's not going to be stunned. And you're going to see these little birdie birdies above his head and all you got to do is give him one little swipe. That's going to give a crack to his helmet. During my first recording of this, I actually did a shield parry of this, which I'm pretty proud of because it was not easy at all. But uh, it doesn't do anything. Instead, it, he just he's pretty much unstunned by it. So, yeah, no real reason to shield parry other than saying that you did it. And all you need to do is just repeat this two more times. Because he's, he's pretty much invincible otherwise. After your third hit, you're going to break the mask. His eyes are going to go back to normal. The children are going to be so relieved that he's back to normal. Also, somehow he lost his jacket in that fight. We're going to see what we think is Princess Zelda. She's apparently going to be causing a tremor that's going to seal us inside of this cave. From here, you're going to get Yonobo's Power of Fire. In my opinion, the second best Sage ability in the game. All you need to do is just grab him, focus toward the red rock, and then let loose. You could also use this on pretty much every other type of rock in the game that you need to break your way through as an alternative to cannon shields and bomb flowers and sledgehammers. Outside, Yonobo's gonna be looking at the red haze spouting from Death Mountain, as if though that is new to the Legend of Zelda franchise. There's always some sort of lava or magma or lizards or gloom or haze or malice or something coming out of Death Mountain that shouldn't be. Uh, even in one game, I think it was ice. Oh no, that wasn't Death Mountain. Okay. 
From here, Yonobo is going to need you to make your way all the way up Death Mountain, which you're more than welcome to grab a cart from this area and then make your way on across and then take that cart and then move it to here and then circle Death Mountain all the way around until you come to this shrine right here. Alternatively, you could just go from any Sky Island, like any of these or any that are up high enough, and make your way to this shrine right here. So for time's saving sake, I'm going to recommend the latter of the two, and I'm just going to fast travel here. Once you make your way on up, D Yonobo's apparently just going to manifest out of nothing. He's going to roll slightly forward, and then you have to speak with him again. And then she gave me this fancy mask to wear around. After okay, that, so Zelda gave you a mind uh, control device, duly noted. Princess Zelda, we need to talk to you. It's dangerous. To go alone, take this. From here, Death Mountain is going to erupt in a whole lot of that red rock that the marble roast has been coming from. Gee, I hope Zelda's okay. And from here, three giant red rock dragon heads are going to be sprouting out. Moragia. Luckily, someone left a wing with two batteries, a control stick, and four fans next by next to us with a cart. So let's go ahead, grab that, climb on top, and just like Yonobo does for the minecarts, he's going to be making his way to the front of your Zonai device. And all you need to do is just keep ascending, and once you're high enough, you can let loose of Yonobo and attack the three different heads of Moragia. You actually don't even really have to be that close, as long as it's just kind of near the, the, the soft wiggly part of it, then you're good. After defeating Moragia, there's going to be a whole bunch of that red rock now just crumbling inside of Death Mountain. From here, we're going to make our way inside of the Death Mountain Chasm. Be careful because all of this giant magma rock can and will hurt you. It will not only do magma damage to you, but it will also do gloom damage to you. Also, up until now, you've only needed one piece of flame breaker armor. However, now that you're underground, you're going to definitely need two. Pro tip, if you only purchased one piece of flame breaker armor, you can make your way to this lizard pond right here. And here's going to be a cave of the lizard's burrow. And inside is the Varudanya helm, divine helm from Breath of the Wild exclusive to the amiibos in that game and you're going to be able to put that on and that's going to be a second piece of flame breaker armor if you don't have one i've also illuminated all of the depths but don't worry you don't actually have to do that for right now but you will definitely see this one light route i recommend activating it and you know is going to be standing nearby after interacting with him at this point this is now the second point throughout the entire goron quest line that you have to interact with him and you're going to be told to come to him Thank you for the clarification. If the darkness of this area is a little intimidating for you, I definitely recommend making your way over to these two light routes and illuminating them. And then once these two are illuminated, your path is gonna be a lot more clearer. All you need to do is make your way to, I'd say either of them, and then we're gonna make our way over to here. The only obstacle in the way is right here. There's gonna be some red rocks. Yonobo's gonna break those, and we're gonna make our way to the fire temple. And welcome to the fire temple. Funny enough, you actually don't need to walk inside of this first building to be considered inside of it, which I think is kind of neat. Your noble's going to be hearing a voice and wondering if it's coming from inside. We're now required to speak to Yonobo right here. After this, we're going to grab Yonobo, destroy the red rock, head inside the fire temple. And straight ahead of us is going to be five padlocks on the wall. From here, there's going to be a hand statue to interact with. So let's go ahead and activate that. That's going to activate the fast travel point for you. And then you're going to try to open up this door, but all five of the padlocks are locked. From here, you're going to be getting the location of all five of the padlocks appearing on your map, and they are on different floors. Uh, editing Austin should have gone through, labeled the floors, and the order in which I'm going to be doing these. And while it's not very linear, there is kind of a predetermined path that makes it easier for you. And that's the order I'm going to be going in. First of all, we're going to be making our way up here. I think I only need one level of fireproof down here. That's right. I only need one level of fireproof. Great. Let's go ahead and take care of this construct along the way. And you're going to be seeing a whole bunch of... I'm going to be referring to these as cobblestone because it is water plus fire. And if Minecraft has taught me anything, that makes cobblestone. If you follow Game of Thrones, then it's obsidian. Whatever you want to say, I'm just going to say cobblestone. Anyways, there's going to be a fire, fire hydrant nearby. All you need to do is take this fire hydrant and place it on top of some lava to make some more cobblestone for yourself. Hop over the different stones. 
all the way to the end. And here you're gonna be finding, conveniently enough, a minecart with a fan. Wait, there's already one on the rail, right? Yep, great. Let's go ahead and activate it. Straight ahead of you is going to be a switcher. This is going to switch between two different rails. Let's go ahead and activate this. If you don't activate it, you're just gonna go in a circle. Upon making our way to the end, let's hop off. From here is gonna be a fire hydrant. We're gonna need this for the next room. There's also going to be a fire like like here. And spoilers, fires like likes don't like water. You could extinguish their fireballs and you could damage them, which is then gonna stick their face out and take them out easy peasy. From here, we're gonna make ourselves a nice old fashioned Minecraft cobblestone generator by just adding some water into some lava. You're gonna need a minimum of three pieces for this to do it easily. Attach the three pieces end to end like so. I realized that I, I dropped it in the lake and because of that, it's just making more and more. So that's kind of funny. All we need to do is be able to cross this while having Unobo's ability active. Destroy the giant red red rock on the wall. Also over here, you're gonna be finding two Zonai hydrants as well as one that you could fuse to your shield. And Unobo's gonna be saying, hey, look, it's a gong. Let's go gong the gong. All you need to do is grab Unobo, face straight ahead, and he will go ahead and gong the gong for you. That's our first padlock complete. Now we're going to make our way back to where our minecart was. From here, this switch is gonna go ahead and open up the gate. Either grab your old minecart or one of these new ones that's pretty handy. Set it down on the track and go ahead and activate it. From here, there's gonna be a red rock in the way. You can use Unovo to get rid of that red rock. And also there's gonna be a construct on his own cart who's going to do a horrible job at hitting you with a bow and arrow, and as long as you knock him off with Yonobo, you get his drops. There they are. From here, if you manage to knock that switch as you're driving across, that's fantastic. If not, don't worry. At the end of here is going to be a turntable exchanger. Let's activate that. Which is going to flip us around. And if you didn't hit the switch before, you could do it now. For some reason, Yonobo's on the side of my cart instead of the front. Straight ahead is going to be just a chest with a couple of arrows. I don't need that, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this cart. Move it to over here. And this is going to be a bell that is going to move these rails between high and low. Oh, hang on a second. I need you to come back because I need to hop on that. Also, I've been ignoring this igneous talus that has decided to punch me in the face. Hop on your minecart, make your way to the opposite side, and let's turn our minecart off, because I've been quite reckless about that. You know, Bo? I need you over here, buddy. Thank you. Let's go ahead and shoot off this red rock, and now there's going to be a fire hydrant that's going to be making a whole bunch of cobblestone for you. All you have to do is grab one, move it out of the way, attach it to the next, and we're gonna repeat this so that is going to be six cobblestone pieces long, which I believe is the minimum amount of pieces you need for a functional bridge. After all six are attached, we're gonna go ahead and plop it on top of these two platforms. I almost fell to my death, but instead I just dropped it as a perfect bridge, so that's handy. Over here is a Captain Construct level three, I believe. Oh, that was a soldier four, okay. Go ahead and gong the gong, and that's gonna be our second gong that we gonged. From here, feel free to head on up over there. There's going to be a chest with, uh, I'm pretty sure that chest is just 10 arrows. But I'm just gonna go ahead and make my way back over this bridge. You know that bell that we rang in order to lift this lower? Well, we're gonna shoot an arrow in order to lift it higher. From here, let's go ahead, get on our minecart. I didn't place that well. Why does this minecart not like me? You're seeing this, right? They always just kind of snap into place. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead, turn it on, and make our way up to the next floor. This is the fire temple, third floor that we need to be on, and right here is actually a fantastic place if you want to go ahead and put down a travel medallion, because we're right in the exact middle of the entire fire temple, and Retracing your steps to here, kind of a pain, but if you have a travel medallion, definitely plop it down. From here, this is the Captain Construct Level 4, who is 
a very powerful Captain Construct for you to take down, but a very nice drop for you to have. You know, Bo, anytime you want to hop in, that'd be great. Tullin's doing a great job, and he's not even here. Go for it, Yunobo. Come on. You gonna you gonna do a thing? Anytime now, buddy. Come on. Good job. You did almost like 10 damage. So proud of you. Definitely want this Captain Four Horn. Nice. Right where this Captain Four was, you're gonna be finding a rocket. This rocket, I'm gonna recommend that you put on the back of this minecart right here. Also, feel free to grab this Zonai Hydrant. Over here are gonna be more Zonai Hydrants and rockets. And here's a chest, I'm pretty sure, with 10 arrows. Nailed it. Now we're gonna take our minecart with our rocket and we're gonna be putting it on this rail over here. For reference, I'm gonna be showing you on the map that we are directly in the middle and we are now going to be facing down to the southwest. And the reason that we had to put a rocket on it is because if you look ahead, the cart rail is going to be out. So let's go ahead and activate this, which is gonna yeet us up here. Ow, thanks guy. Okay, in order to get this bell, um, I'm sure there's some sort of mechanic that's supposed to make it pretty easy to get, but honestly, it's directly above us. So I'm going to 100% recommend that you just climb up. It's not even far. And on top of that, there's a pedestal halfway. That way, like I was just recklessly climbing. I didn't even put the climbing armor on. It took one and a half stamina rings. And then there's a second place to stand up. And once you climb to the top, there's gonna be a gong for us to gong. Wait till Yunobo decides to spawn in. Thank you. Let's grab him and go gong the gong. This is the third gong that we gonged. Just two left, Link. Let's keep it up, Goro. From here, either fly, use a minecart, or fast travel with the travel medallion back to that turntable exchange on the third floor in the middle. Now from here, we want to look north, and northbound is going to be the location of the last two locks that we are going to need to lock. We're going to be hitting this bell on the right, that's going to increase the height, and we're going to be hitting this bell on the left, which is going to be rotating it. We're going to hit it two times, and now we're facing upwards. There's already a minecart conveniently enough here for us. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Now there may be some... Uh, game mechanic designed to make you way to make your way over to here, or you just hop off of the minecart and then you're done. From here, you're gonna be seeing a giant red rock. Let's go ahead and bang that red rock with Yunobo. That's gonna open up a fire hydrant, who's gonna be creating a four by four piece of cobblestone, and in front of us is a four by eight piece of cobblestone. Let's rotate this so that it's a right angle and attach them together. From here, we've now made ourselves a nice handy little ramp. Let's rotate it like this and then aim it straight north, right at that gong up there. Now, just aim your noble right to the ramp and you're gonna see his dots pointing upward. There we go. And that's our fourth gong gonged. Only one left, almost done, Goro. From here, that ramp that you just made, grab it, turn around, and you're gonna be seeing this bridge that faces off to the right. Go ahead and place that down. Grab your noble once again and loosen up the ramp, which is gonna destroy that big red rock. From here, if you have a rocket shield, feel free to use that, or paraglide on over with Tullin, or just just climb, you just climb too. If you are climbing, then you may need to ascend into this rock, which may or may not bring you one level higher than you wanna be. You wanna be on the fourth floor and go through the door that we destroyed the red rock to, and then drop through the floor, and then here's a lock to unlock the door. Look to the left and then on the floor is going to be a chest once more containing a mighty Zonite longsword and right behind is going to be our fifth gong that we're going to gong. And now we're done with the padlocks forevermore. I also don't know if you realized, but every temple has progression points like doors, activation posts, whatever. But the background music inside of the temple actually changes with how much progression you have and the strings that they bring in supposed to feel like like you're building up to a crescendo and just amazing sound design. Really, really love it. That's all the locks, Link. The door should open. Let's go ahead and activate the dragon portal, which is then going to be dropping this cage down now that we've unlocked our five locks. 
Inside of this room is going to be all those red rocks on the ceiling. You can take your Nobo. He's going to go up the quarter pipe. Uh, aim better than I did. If you stand directly in the middle and then aim directly at one of the larger gray pieces on the floor, that's going to be a perfect path upward. And now all those rocks are going to fall on Link. Lol. Oh no! Is Zelda inside the monster? He's really not that bright of a boy. And here's the Marbled Goma, which the Marbled Goma is definitely one of the easier bosses to take down. Is it easier than Kolgera? I don't know. Marbled Goma is pretty easy to take down. All you have to do is grab your Nobo and then start knocking out its legs. He's really not going to like that. And then he's going to be spitting out these giant red rocks at you. You can go ahead and rewind one of those, which is then going to damage him. From here, you can use Ascend to make your way through Marbled Goma's body, just like you do on the Stone Taluses. And since you only need one piece of Flame Breaker armor, if you haven't gone to two pieces of Attack Up armor, now is a great time to do so. I'm going to recommend grabbing a very strong two-handed sword. Mine is just a Silver Lionel Blade, a Mighty Zonite Longsword, and Silver Lionel Saber Horn. If you don't have a sil Silver Lionel Saber Horn, then feel free to grab whatever you have. And then you definitely got yourself the Captain Construct Four Horn. That's going to be handy for this. I'm just going to go ahead and do a charged attack to the eye, and all you have to do is bring it down to half health. If you're unable to do that in one large charge sequence, then you're just going to fall back down to the ground, use Yunobo to knock out another leg, ascend through, repeat the exact same steps until he gets down to half health. Now it's going to be time for phase two of the fight. By the way, there's one of those cool tiers up there. Look at that. From here, Marbled Goma is going to be spitting a whole bunch of the red rocks down to the ground. Go ahead, use Rewind on one of them, or use Ultra Hand to get it out of your way. But if he does these additional rocks at you, then definitely use Rewind on those, and then it's going to explode on him. He's not going to like that. You're going to fall? Oh no, I didn't get it close enough. Alternatively, you could just use your Nobo, and then shoot your Nobo up the quarter pipes to damage the legs. At that point, he's going to lose his balance, fall down to the ground, quick climb up, and then just use your charged attack. If you're unable to defeat it in one sequence of hits, all you have to do is just repeat the same steps over again. From here, you are going to begin yourself a heart container. Speak with Yunobo, which is going to cue, I think, four consecutive cutscenes in which he's going to be getting his sage powers from who I'm fairly certain is actually going to be the ancient Goron Rudanya. So it's my duty to help you fight. Also, he said duty. Oh. After all done, Yunobo's going to be like, hey, I can't believe I was brainwashed. Lol, that wasn't Zelda. What can we do now? I don't think Zelda would do something like that. Maybe it was an imposter. Once you're all done, you're going to be getting the vow of Yunobo, Sage of Fire. And now you're going to be able to use Yunobo's power of fire anytime that you want. And Yunobo of Goron City is complete. Oh, by the way, speak to the Elder over here. He's going to give you the quest about the Lizard Lakes, which I told you about the Varudanya Divine Helm before. And if you already got it, then uh, speaking to him is just going to give you the quest, and the quest is complete. Nice. Well, anyways, guys, I hope you found this guide on the Fire Temple helpful. If you did, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.